Carl McIntyre, number 24, we can at least probably get through the timeline. Uh, this could be us. That's why I included him on the list. We're, we're jumping forward into the 20th century. He's born in 1906 in Ipsilani, Michigan. I've heard of that. 1928, he enters the Princeton Theological Seminary with the intention of becoming a Presbyterian minister. 1931, he completes his degree at Westminster Theological Seminary, feeling that Princeton Theological Seminary had become too liberal, as many of us still feel today, ordained as a Presbyterian minister. Uh, May 1931, he marries... Uh, Fairy Eunice Davis. I think that's a great name, Fairy Eunice. 1933, he becomes the pastor of the Presbyterian Church of Collingswood, New Jersey. 1934, joins the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions. This would be kind of like, uh, what's the name of that uh, newspaper? Mulaney. This would kind of be like Mulaney, because notice it's the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions. So he, he set up his own board in competition with the official Presbyterian Church. Feeling that traditional Presbyterian mission apparatus had become too liberal. 1935 to 36, he was tried by a Presbyterian court over the Rogue Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions. McIntyre lost and he renounced membership in the Presbyterian Church. February 1936, he launches the Christian Beacon, a weekly newspaper, so he has now gone independent and he is now going to fight back. 1937, he founds the Bible Presbyterian Church, which uses the Schofield Bible, uh, which is uh, the Bible uh, commentary is very influenced by John Darby and dispensationalism, so it's a very conservative uh, Bible and commentary. He bans the use of uh, tobacco and alcohol in the church. 1838, after, uh, 1938, after losing a lawsuit, McIntyre pulls his congregation out of the Presbyterian Church of Collington, New Jersey, and down the street to a large tent. He did this all dramatically. It was a huge congregation. It was thousands of people. And, and he did this all dramatically where they were all in the, the, uh, uh, the church. And he told them to all stand up. And then he walked down the aisle, and they all followed him, and they walked down the street to this huge tent that had been set up down there. Uh, 1941 forms the American Council of Christian Churches, a fundamentalist alternative to the National Council of Churches. And if you want to pick the uh, most left wing of all uh, Northeastern church denominational organizations, that would be the World Council of Churches. And he, in 1948, co founded the International Council of Christian Churches as an alternative to the left wing World Council of Churches. March 1955 begins a daily half-hour radio show entitled The 20th Century Reformation Hour. 1957 pulled support from the ministry of Billy Graham because Graham supported desegregation and uh, ecumenicism with the Roman Catholic Church. This would be during Graham's uh, New, York, uh, New York City crusade. 1967 fights the FCC over the fairness doctrine. Any of you ever listen to Rush Limbaugh? He talks a lot about the Fairness Doctrine. And Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and all of them, they wouldn't exist if the Fairness Doctrine still existed. October 3, 1970, uh, organizes victory marches in favor of the Vietnam War. This is to counteract the protest against the Vietnam War. 1973, WXUR, a radio station owned by McIntyre, is forced off the air by the FCC. So, what does he do? September 19, 1973, he operates a pirate radio station off the coast of Cape May. He got a boat, he got a transmitter, he went beyond the three mile limit, and he continued his radio show. So much for you, FCC. Uh, March 19, 2002, at age 95, and most of his empire and financial ruin, he dies in Voorhees, New Jersey, at a hospital. I remember growing up. It was impossible to hear Carl McIntyre's name without them adding a fundamentalist preacher. But in reality, fundamentalist, in reference to him, simply meant that he believed in the Apostles and Nicene Creed, and he also believed in the foundational documents of the Reformation, such as Christian Institutes and Westminster Confessions. And by that definition, most of the members of this class would also be considered fundamentalist, even though by our understanding of the word, so he's a Presbyterian minister who fought against the increasing liberal bent of the Northern Presbyterian Church in the 1930s. This 
church would not have been included in the uh, liberal category in the 1930s. At the time, the argument was framed by the press as conservative versus moderate. What a wall are that? So conservative. So Carl McIntyre, he's this conservative fundamentalist. But the modern and enlightened people are the ones the progressive. 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 They're progressive. In reality, it was conservative versus social gospel. Founder and co founded several organizations as a backlash against uh, the liberal direction of mainline Protestant churches. Uh, I, I think the big one was the World Council of Churches has always been a cesspool of left wing <laughs> wacky dualism. Social justice. <laughs> social, social justice. He was an early uh, fighter against the atrocious. Any First Amendment, any Constitution of Fairness Doctrine in the FCC. If you're not familiar with the Fairness Doctrine, if you owned a radio or a television station, you had to balance all opinions that you presented on that radio or television station with opinions from the other side. Uh, and the other side was never satisfied with balance. Mm -hmm. 1973, his radio station was forced off the air. The elimination of the Fairness Doctrine in 1987 helped fuel the rise of talk radio in the United States, so whether you like Russia or not. Uh, Carl McIntyre was the guy who made Rush Limbaugh possible because he, he fought against the Fairness Doctrine when no one else was fighting against it. How long is the Fairness Doctrine How long is the Fairness Doctrine law? Oh, I guess it started in the 30s under Roosevelt. So another model. Yeah. Fifty years. So McIntyre makes our list because he was an early warrior in the fight against leftist policies in the mainline Protestant churches, especially in the Presbyterian Church. So.